Today's talk is called Ever New Joy, Joy, but that wasn't really the idea that I had. I was going to do a talk on compassion till it hurts. <laughs> compassion, which means to suffer with, but I've changed my mind, but there will be some suffering for those of you who might miss it if I didn't bring it up. I'm reading the book called Shanta Ram, and it's a story about this guy who was in prison, he was a heroin addict, and he was a thief, and he ends up breaking out of prison. And, and he says he learned everything about his life while he was chained to a wall in an Australian prison, being beaten nearly to death. He realized that he had two choices. He could either spend his whole life seeking revenge and hating people, or he could choose to forgive and love. That's the choice that we come with every day. We make a choice about how we're going to look at our life. And it took him the rest of his life to finally own the decision that he had made. You and I face the same thing. In the book, he says, I love this too. He goes, if I only had known then what I know now, how different my life would have been. Yeah, you know that one? If I only knew then what I know now. You get that? Do you ever say that to yourself? If I'd only gotten to unity sooner, if I got to these truths quicker, then I would know something that I could apply to my life. If I'd only known it, then, wow, now everything would be different. You can know the end at the beginning, right here and now. You can know that. Jesus came to teach us that. You can know the end result. It looks like he went on a journey, but he knew the end. The end is joy. The end is wholeness. The end is oneness. And then we enter back into our life, and we can begin to know that and embody that right here and now. You, you've been given the answer. It's right here. You don't need to wait any longer. So he's in a slum, the worst possible slum in India, 25,000 people. Um, and he ends up being a doctor for all these people. He has no medical background, except he knows how to sew up people who have been cut by knives, shot by bullets, and he can glue them back together. But he's got quite the skill of doing that. And so that becomes his job in, in this slum. And the slum's an interesting place. People live in an environment that you and I, we can't even imagine what it would be like. To live in a place where you have a piece of 8 by 10, and it's got plastic around it, held together by duct tape, and old pieces of scrap wood. And in that eight by 10 place, you live with your mother and your father and your sisters and brothers. You all live there together with mud floors. The bathroom, the bathrooms are over by the sea wall. That's where you relieve yourself, by the sea wall. There are rats as big as cats that run around the place. And at night, hundreds of wild dogs roam the place. I mean, it is a bad physical place. But there's a spiritual environment there, because they know something. They know it's all for one, and they get it, because they have no other choice except to live from that oneness. And so there's kind of a slum rule about how you live every day. When, when, when you live that tight with each other, and you haven't got the space around us like we do, our cockroach ruts, you realize you share a oneness with everybody. You have no choice. And so when someone's having an argument or a disagreement, particularly if it's a husband and wife, you leave the people alone to deal with that. You don't get involved with it because they have no physical space. They give them psychological space unless you cross a certain line. And when that line is crossed, then the council comes in to bear to make some changes. You don't get to keep doing what you're doing. And so in this one particular situation that Shantaram witnesses, this man is beating his wife with a bamboo stick and screaming at her. He's disgustingly drunk, pounding on her. And so the council comes before this plastic enclosure, and he does something that's just awful. He, he screams and curses and yells, and he throws his beaten wife naked out onto the front of all people. In India, in 1980, um, that was such a disgrace for a woman to be thrown like that out. Um, 
The only person who would see anyone naked would be your husband. Sometimes he never did. It was the worst thing you could do to a female. And so they drag him out of the tent, and they bring him to the center of the community. And each one of them takes that bamboo stick, and they beat him just as he's beaten his wife. And they, they tell him, look at you now. You're, you're so tough. Look at you now. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. And he doesn't admit it. He just goes, well, I don't know what I did. I didn't do anything. I want a drink. So they don't give him water. They give him 125 proof alcohol and get him totally dehydrated and keep beating him and beating him and beating him. Seven days they do this. Night and day there's someone doing that. And Shantaram said, well, that looks like my life in prison. I know that one really well. But then something happens. All of a sudden he gets, this is what I've been doing to my beautiful wife. This is terrible. I am so sorry. And then everyone in that community who had just been beaten and beating this guy to death holds them in their arms, wipes the blood away from his wounds, and spends two months nurturing him back to health again. He says, I, I just, I just want to tell you I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And he's totally accepted back into the community. Because he is the community. And, and six months later, his wife joins him. She doesn't have to. And I thought about that. How sometimes the guilt and the shame and the blame needs to be beaten out of us until we admit what we've done to ourselves. And then I thought, my God, this is a depressing talk. <laughs> This is making me depressed. These poor people listening to me with my suffering. We should do something else here. Enough with the depression. Enough having it beaten out of us. I'm ready for the resurrection, aren't you? I'm doing this in the hot tub now by myself. People are clearing out of the gym when I'm there doing this. And then I started singing this song right there. It started coming to me. Listen. And the beatings. Joy, 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 ever new joy. 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 That's what we're going to know at the end. <laughs> right? That's what we are. We come from joy. We don't get to joy. We are from joy. We don't need to wait to the end to begin to learn the lesson of it now, do we? No. Do we have to? No. Do you have to have it beaten out of you by life? If you want to, you can. But we don't need to keep making that choice here, do we? We can know the end right here now in the beginning of this fresh new baby new day. We can know it right here and now. Um, Matt Boggs, who was raised by Matt and Mary Morrissey, you can imagine what kind of being he is, he talks about that. He goes to the millionaire club place where his brother is telling, selling timeshares in Mexico. And he wants to become one of those people in the millionaire club. And his brother, he has no idea what to do, teaches him how to be a salesman. He was a biologist for a whole bunch of years, uh, a teacher of biology at the high school. And so he says, well, here's what we'll do. Let's do some of the stuff mom taught us. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, when you begin to think about what your sale is like, I want you to go to the end of the sale where the sale is made. And think about what that feels like. I want you to go to the end right now, even before you've made a sale. So as he gets ready in the morning to go for his first sale, he's already thinking about the end. He's visualizing the end result. He's visualizing sitting in this beautiful condo with this very happy couple who is now signing the dotted line to get this timeshare. And he sees himself handing the keys to them. He backs up and he sees himself walking into that room. He feels it. He's censorizing it. He's, he's making it true in every atom and cell of his being. Nothing's happened yet. He hasn't even connected with the couple yet. But for him, the deal is already sealed. 
He's taken the end result and seen it, felt it, in every fiber of his being at the beginning. Do you feel that now? The joy in that? And then there he is. He says, we're opening the door with the keys and we're walking in. And he goes, now I'm standing and I'm shaking their hands for the first time. And I'm going to give them something that's going to fulfill their dream. Something they've always wanted. They're going to have that in their life now. Do you feel what that feels like? To know the end at the beginning of what you're involved with right here and now? You know what a gift that is? Most people have no idea you can use your mind that way. We don't, we don't think we can. What right do I have to do that? What right do you have not to? You're applying the same principle, whether you choose to use it for awakening or staying asleep. It doesn't matter. God doesn't give up anyway about that. You choose what you want to do with today, right? That's, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will be glad and rejoice within it. You don't need to keep beating yourself up to get these teachings. <gasps> oh, wow. So I'm talking to um, the orthopedic clinic where I'm going to get the resurfacing done. And, and I got it. It's going to be in July. I don't have the date yet. They didn't call me with the date yet. Don't cross me. Um, and I'm waiting for the date to come. And, but I know it's going to be in July. And, and after I get that news, I, I, I go, go to bed and I wake up and I get so, so in, in, in two and a half months, um, you're going to have the surgery. So what are you going to do for the next two and a half months? Mm, what are you going to do for the next two and a half months? Are you going to live? Nowhere waiting for a future date. Anybody know that one? Oh, it's an end to this. I'm going to miss the two and a half months in between now and then. I want to learn it then and now. What am I doing with this experience? What do I want to learn from these closing days of the final end of the frontier of this adventure? Because there's only going to be another one waiting. Hello, there'll be another adventure coming for you. What are you going to do with the one that you're in? Hello, what are you doing with the two and a half months you're in? You're going to spend it nowhere, or do you want to be now here? Huh? What do you want? you got to choose that every single day. Darn, every moment of every day you come to that decision. It's going to end. There's an end to everything. Nothing lasts here. So what are you going to do with the time from, from then to now? What are you going to do with it? You've got to ask yourself that every single day. Because you'll only create another situation that you'll be in. Life is filled with, hello, lots of situations that you get yourself involved in. What are you going to choose to do with the one that you're in now? You can begin to censorize the end right here at the beginning of this moment. So I'm talking to this miracle woman who's been my guru and my master teacher. Her name is, is Evelyn. And Evelyn is the, is the secretary for this clinic. And Evelyn is a wisdom teacher. She knows something that I don't know. Just like all your great teachers know something about you you don't know. Jesus knows something about you that you don't know. Christ knows something about you that you don't know. The Buddha knows that you're okay. <laughs> they are at the end. Don't wait till the tunnel to finally get, oh, that's what it was about? No, you begin to know that here and now. Evelyn knows something. Evelyn has seen 3,000 people just like old hippie Richard. And they come in and they get this surgery. And when they wake up, there's no more physical pain. She knows that. She's the wisdom keeper. She knows the pain will be gone. You're not going to stay in pain. Do you understand what I'm saying? The teachers know that this pain is just physical. The truth is the pain will be gone. I've had 25 people come up and go, you are not going to believe this, but you're going to get knocked out with drugs. Yeah. And when you wake up, you will have no more pain. But you'll still have the mind that suffers if you choose to continue to suffer. That doesn't go away just creates another situation. Deal with the pain. The pain is gone. Now what are you doing with your suffering mind? That's where the work is. With the mind, not with the pain. The pain comes and it goes. It rises and falls. The suffering is a choice. 
I'm not going to spend my whole life being nowhere, waiting for another thing to teach me the same lesson. Are you? Are you going to do that? No, she knows that for me. God knows that for you. The masters know that for you. It need not be so. You don't need to start the same beatings all over again to finally surrender. I surrender. It's a chess game. I surrender. I surrender. I still think I have a thousand moves left. <laughs> you don't. You have one move, and that's to embody this knowingness, to bring it into your life. The joy is already here now. You don't need to wait for it. So while I'm talking to my guru on the phone, and actually I was emailing her probably 25 times, and she's listening to my ranting and raving, as too many people have to these days. She says to me, what is that thing on your email that you have like a little thing you have, that little tagline, you get a tagline on your email? Ours says, God is love, I am love, choosing love, feeling love, perception changes. She goes, what is that? She goes, I have lived that way my whole life. <laughs> I try to see every person through the eyes of that love. What is that love? I said, it's the love that you're manifesting right now here for me. Do you hear that now? God is love, I am love. Choosing love, feeling love, perception changes. God is joy, I am joy. Choosing joy. Feeling joy, perception changes. Boom! That's knowing what you can know now and not waiting for the end to remember it again. And that's the only reason any of us are even here. Is it not true? That's what we're here for. So a little Havasu, um, you know, cancer, mouth, all filled with cancer. And we were actually thinking, we went to the clinic and we got the pre-pills to knock her out, our little doll at Havasu, just to have her knocked out. So we took her to the to the vets to have her taken down so her pain would end. Um, we were getting ready for that. And that was our agenda. It is not Havasu's agenda at all. <laughs> Havasu is in ever new joy. The other day, the other day she literally, when I opened the door for the squirrels to go get them, she literally, and you can knock me over real easy, she almost knocked me on the ground to get a squirrel that she almost caught by about four inches. She doesn't care that she's in pain because she's not suffering from it because she has no mind thoughts about, oh, I'm suffering. Oh, I spent those pills. I better be careful. These guys are gonna do me in. She is just in joy no matter what is going on. She's living every moment in joy, joy, joy. Ever new, ever fresh. Joy. She's not waiting to get to the doggy tunnel to be told, ooh, you were the best doggy ever. Here is your ticket to joy. She's going, I don't need no ticket. I'm in joy. I'm just doing my life. I, I can't, my mouth cans and I can't eat. It's awful. But she doesn't care. She lives in joy because that's all she knows. That's what she is. And that is what we can know too in whatever little teensy, eensy, little tiny, glimpsy way we can do that. We can know that now. Can I have my clicker, please? I love my clicker, by the way. This is my new favorite toy. It brings me much joy. Here's a toy that brings me joy. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's going to come on now. We just absolutely know. Am I supposed to do a click first? Okay, click it first. Look at that, you guys. Oh, is that ever new joy or what? Now, if I only knew then what I know now, guess what? You already know it now, so there you go. Before the beginning, Jesus knew what the end was. He showed us that we can know that same truth here and now. It's simply this. Nothing real could be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the joy of God. Period. That's it. You can know that now. In this moment, we can experience the joy and freedom of what we will know at the end of this lifetime, right here and right now. The joy we are looking for is already present in this whole instant. It's time to stop the beatings. <laughs> the universe is set up for awakening. We don't have to allow the fear and the guilt and the shame and the blame to beat the illusions out of us. That's the old 
testimony to fear and separation. So let's fast forward to the moment when all the pain is gone and we know ever new joy, joy, joy. So sensorize these statements with me. I'm going to say them once, the sense, the word, and then you're going to follow it with me. God is joy. God is joy. I am joy. I am joy. Choosing joy. Choosing joy. Feeling joy. Feeling joy. Feeling joy. Perception changes. Perception changes. And then we can live in the awareness of that which is always true. Live in the awareness. Sing it with me now. You're not waiting, are you? What are you waiting for? Oh, I shouldn't sing now. Joy, 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 ever new joy, 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 ever new joy, I'd swing if I could. Joy, 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 ever new joy, 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 ever new joy, 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 ever new joy, 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 ever new joy. Make that firm. Sing that in the midst of whatever you're growing or going through, and you will be a great benefit to all beings with your service, to knowing what you can know now, not waiting till the end. We practice well, don't we? And so deeply. It's not just for ourselves, but for the benefit of all other beings. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>